one of the things I, well, I was thinking about when I was watching some of your matches here from Ring of Honor recently is um, like how you're uniquely in this period of time where you have eight months uh, working with this roster, no fans around. Is it almost like a blessing a bit for you having a chance to reacclimate yourself to that ROH style, get to know these talents before you hit the road and get to go back out in front of fans? Is there, do, you, do you kind of appreciate this or do you resent the hell out of what's going on right now? No, I mean, I've kind of just taken it for what it is. Like, it is what it is. It's, I'm genuinely, I'm, I mean, when you get fired in the middle of a pandemic, the first thing that clicks in your head as a dad is like, I got to provide. Like, that's, that's instantly the first thing that went through my head. And I know I asked for my release, but when you ask for your release, when you can wrestle, and then when you ask, when you get fired, when you can't, it's an entirely different dynamic. So when you get fired and not only I get fired, but my wife gets fired, your instant thought is provide. What am I going to do? How am I going to feed these two kids that are looking at me? Like, Hey dad, we don't really care about wrestling. We just want to eat. And so I've just been blessed and genuinely happy that I've been able to work during this pandemic when so many people I know have not been able to, yeah. but to focus more on the question, I actually think it's been nice because you know how it is in wrestling where, where crowds can hijack a show or crowds can kind of dictate which way they want to take someone. Um, and it's kind of been nice where, where the booking of ring of honor has been able to just dictate who's going to be the stars, who's going to be over what were, I don't uh, genuinely, I don't think the pure division would have been able to get off the ground had it not been for the pandemic because it's a completely different style and it's given this chance for, and thank God, Jonathan Gresham was the pure champ to do it because he's kind of given these fans a new way to look at wrestling and in a way to kind of like, okay, this is the way these matches go. We can accept them. So now when fans start coming in, they're going to be like, okay, we know what to expect in a pure rules match. Whereas if you just threw it in front of like a thousand fans watching, they're going to be like, what the hell am I watching? Cause I haven't seen it in like 10 or 15 years. So I think it's been good for ring of honor. I actually think ring of honor out of all the companies, I think the pandemic actually helped them. And, uh, and, and I'm curious to see how the crowds react going forward. I think, I, I mean, ring of honor fans are always crazy. So I think they'll take, take well to it, but I'm genuinely excited to see how they're going to handle these pure rules matches because it's been a minute since there's been a pure rules match in front of a crowd. Okay, real quick. So just to refresh everybody, right? Because you you could see it. It's been a while since a lot of people have seen these matches. So how, for those that don't know, will a a, pro, a pure rules... God, that's a tongue twister. How, how exactly is a pure rules match? How are those rules different than a traditional wrestling match? So the, you get you only get three rope breaks. You you can go to the ropes three. It's, it's really down. It's like brass tactics when it comes to pro wrestling there's no punching um if someone comes down and interferes they get fired the match gets thrown out you get disqualified you lose there's a hard 20 count on the floor none of the ref coming out to check on you and then going back in it's 20 20 seconds that's it um you get three rope breaks once you use the third one you no longer can get to the ropes anymore um so if you get to the you, I was going to say, or you can get to the ropes, but they won't break the hold, right? You can get to the ropes, but you can just, you'll just be holding onto the ropes at that point. Um, and then, yeah, it, it's just, it's, it's a different strategy. It's how you go about it. And I don't know. And like you said, how familiar people are with these matches, but if you kind of been watching how, how Gresham has been going about it, it's a completely different structure to pro wrestling. There's a lot of resets. There's a lot of like, all right, we're doing this. We're going to this hold. Then we break it down into strikes. Then we kind of reset. It's it's really more realistic pro wrestling. And I, that, I think that's why I dig it the most is because if you were to turn it on and be like, what are we watching? You're going to see hard strikes. You're going to see technical wrestling. You're going to see legit submission holds where guys will tap out if they can't get to the ropes. It's just, uh, it's back to like the pure sport of pro wrestling, which is for some people and it's not for other people. But if it, it's your thing, I think you'll really get a kick out of it. And I think Ring of Honor fans, the live fans are really going to love it. So in order to get this title shot, you had to compete in this seven-man uh, gauntlet match. Uh, you were in there a about half the time. It was an hour-long YouTube special, so it's free for anybody who wants to go check it out. And you were in there over half an hour, Mike. And I mean, Cheeseburger, Joe Keys, and then uh, PJ Black there at the end. How was that getting to to go in there and wrestle a, a, for a longer period of time and, and with multiple different kinds of opponents there? It felt like I was in there way longer than 30 minutes. I'm not going to lie. It just felt like it just kept going and going. Um, but for me, the place I'm at in my career, and I've talked about this at length, this is what I want. This is what I'm looking for. I was always that guy that was like the sports entertainment guy. 
And that worked great. And it got me to WWE and that was where I wanted to be at the time. And then I left and realized that's not where I want to be. And I kind of fell in love with the new style of pro wrestling, the, the Noah and the early ring of honor style pro wrestling, which was never really my cup of tea when I first started. And now I love it. And so I'm just, I I'm truly genuinely excited to bring that aspect to ring of honor. And like when, I got told I was doing this gauntlet. I was like, okay, I'm going to be in there a long time. But on the flip side, I got excited about it because this is the wrestling I want. Like I was saying earlier, I went to ring of honor management, told them what I wanted to do. And they were like, sure, here's the ball and run with it. So I'm not going to complain if I, I'll go 45 an hour. I don't care. I mean, I, I may pass out. I might black out, but this is what I'm asking for. This is what I want to do. So at the end of the day, yes, I was very tired. I was very sore. I was very beat up. Uh, I think I went back to the hotel and just kind of laid in bed for like two hours straight. And then Maria was like, are you going to move? And I'm like, yeah, let me just build up some momentum. You know, at 36, the... um what there's a, a Hank Williams song where he talks about when he gets older, where the, the hangovers hurt more than they used to. And I always feel like that after matches, the bumps and the, and the bruises, they tend to hurt more than they used to at 36. Yeah. And